Welcome back friends, uh, we have so far talked about the introductory video about Escherichia coli and also we have talked about the infectivity of Escherichia coli and we have seen there are several different types of Escherichia coli infections depending upon the mode of infection they cause we also term them differently like uh, enterohemorrhagic E. coli, enterotoxigenic E. coli, enteropathogenic E. coli and all these things okay now among all of these different types so let me li write those types so 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 we'll be talking about here in this video we'll be talking about pathogenesis pathogenesis or the property or the mode of infection that is uh, taken by Escherichia coli and among all this pathogenic uh, version of E. coli so let me write the pathogenic versions of E. coli and those versions are enterotoxigenic E. coli or ETEC then we are having enteropathogenic E. coli or EPEC then we are having enterohemorrhagic E. coli and also we have talked about the entero invasive E. coli so these four different kinds and we have seen they are associated with different kinds of diseases but almost all of them all of this group uh, are causing uh, diarrhea right so we have seen that almost all of them causes diarrhea so diarrhea means simply loss of water loss of water from from intestinal cell from intestinal cell so it's it's a kind of uh, intestinal cells now it's a kind of uh, dehydration right we know that this is a kind of dehydration that we can talk uh, about diarrhea right and always uh, some of them causes simple watery diarrhea so a lot of water is coming out with stool some of them uh, are also causing uh, bloody diarrhea so let me write bloody diarrhea I know in those cases blood comes out with with stool and lot of water right so in both these cases uh, some of and in all these cases this this part of the um, reason uh, or disease like diarrhea and this kind of symptoms are caused due to the presence of presence of endotoxin presence of endotoxin now the endotoxin remember the endotoxin that is present onto the surface of E. coli and that endotoxin is called lipopolysaccharide layer we all know that for gram negative rods we can find this lipopolysaccharide layer outside now among this lipopolysaccharides we are having antigenic determinants right we are having antigens now the antigens we are having usually are called O antigen we have talked about them and also this kind of bacteria can have H antigen in their flagella and also they can have other types of antigens right now this depending upon this O antigen this can infect uh, our our host cell right and how they are infecting this we will be studying it in this video now this endotoxin that we are talking about this kind of toxin can be of two different types so let me let me talk about this kind of toxin can be of two different type so one type is heat labile heat labile toxin another type is heat resistant heat resistant or let me write heat sorry heat resistant or heat stable heat resistant or heat stable or heat stable kind of toxin now the kind of toxin heat labile they are called as LT toxin and those one which are heat stable are called ST toxin okay so ST kind so this LT and ST are depending upon whether they are heat resistant or heat labile okay now all this kind of toxin especially in this video we are going to talk about this LT type of toxin because we are, we are going to see the mode of activity of this LT toxin now we have seen that diarrhea is a massive loss of water from the intestinal cells right so let me draw the intestinal lining here for you let me draw the intestinal lining so let's say here it is in the cross section so we are looking at the cross section of intestinal cells so let's say these are the villi right so villi is coming out like that so this is the intestinal lining right and these are the intestinal cells are arranged and these are the villi that are coming out and here inside this is a gut which is which is actually making a stool and all these things which will come out from this region but it can have trouble now what is the problem let us look at here now in this case what we know is that this intestinal cells they are having different transporters remember because if you are talking about cell membrane so let me talk about cell membrane a little bit if you are talking about cell membrane now this membrane is permeable to few gases 
So few gas can normally diffuse through the membrane, but except for those some gases like nitrogen, oxygen, and all these things, uh, other molecules like say large molecules and ions must be passed through a channel, and there are channels present inside this. In, 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 in this cell membrane right like embedded they are called transmembrane channels like that now through this channel we are having different ions like say sodium ion can pass through potassium ion can pass through chlorine ion can pass through in or out and all these cases like that okay and the, the this this movement of ions this movement of ions is depending upon a kind of chemical signaling it is depending upon a chemical chemical signaling now the signaling we are talking about here is is involving it is involving ATP and cyclic AMP concentration. It is depending upon the cyclic AMP concentration, the concentration of cyclic AMP in this case. Now in this case, let me write. This is about the concentration of cyclic AMP inside the cell. Now if the concentration of cyclic AMP elevates inside the cell, it will cause the release of sodium ion as well as chlorine ion massively from the intestinal cells into the gut. And if there is a there is a what you can say, uh, this cyclic AMP concentration is keep going down. In those conditions, sodium and other kind of ions will pump inside this intestinal cell from the gut region, right? So simply this is the condition. So let us talk about it. Now in this case, in this case of this villi, there are cells, cell membranes and the cell membrane of this villi cells, they are consisting of several kind of receptor molecules. So let me draw one of, one of the receptor molecules. Let's say this is a receptor. Let's say these are the receptor molecules I'm drawing right now. So there are receptor molecules that are present. Now these receptor molecules, let me write, they are receptor molecule and receptor for signaling, right? Receptor molecule for signaling. What kind of signaling we are talking about? We are talking about the signaling via uh, um, via via the signaling which is involving the G protein coupled receptor, right? The G protein coupled receptor. Okay. Now in this case, the signaling molecules are present and whenever it is getting any kind of signal from outside and that signal is telling these villi cells to release sodium ion, they will release and they will release it if we are having a high concentration of cyclic AMP in this region and if we are having low concentration of cyclic AMP in this region, in those cases they will release sodium and potassium and chlorine ion outside. So this is the basic process. Now in this case what we can see, this heat labile toxin or LT kind of toxin. So let me write this LT kind of toxin. They move inside. So as a result of this LT toxin released by gut bacteria. So let's say these red things are the LT toxins. Now some of the LT toxin will go and attach to this receptor. So they bind with this receptor. As a result of this receptor and LT toxin binding, they will make the they, they will they will trigger some secondary response inside the cell, right? And the response they trigger inside the cell is always on for a longer period of time. So usually whenever a kind of natural signaling molecule come and uh, stuck to this receptor molecules, it will provide some signal and the signaling will occur, cyclic AMP concentration rises and sodium and potassium pumped, uh, sodium chlorine pumped outside into the gut and then the signal stops because this molecule will cleave out and out, uh, go away. But in this case, this LT or heat labile toxin won't be cut and go away. Instead, it will be still binding with this receptor and it is binding throughout the time. As a result, it is keeping the signaling pathway on throughout the time. As a result of that, what we can see that as a result in, in, in this internal region of this villi cells, what we can see uh, rising in the ATP concentration. So as we have raised uh, the ATP concentration, this ATP will be, so, uh, so not, sorry, not ATP, rise in adenylate cyclase, which is an enzyme. So let me talk about it. So rise in an enzyme and that is called adenylate, adenylate cyclase adenylate cyclase. Now this as a result of the elevated concentration of adenylate cyclase which is an enzyme to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. So the role of this adenylate cyclase is to convert ATP into cyclic AMP. And this is brought about by remember adenylate adenylate 
cyclists. Yes. Okay. Now that's the case. That's the usual case in this case. Okay. Now what we can see as a result of this uh, binding of LT uh, toxin to the to to the receptor, it will give the concentration of adenylate cyclase rising. As a result of this concentration of adenylate cyclase is giving is going higher and higher, it will convert more ATP into more cyclic AMP. So eventually we will be ending up with more and more cyclic AMP here inside. So more cyclic AMP inside more cyclic AMP inside so as a result of the concentration of cyclic AMP is getting higher remember uh, we have already talked about it if the concentration of cyclic AMP is going higher in those cases it will trigger the release of sodium chlorine and uh, as well as water from this intestinal cell outside the gut so now what we can see in this case they will start releasing the sodium as well as uh, chlorine as well as water outside so sodium so sodium so let me change the color here so we are having sodium so they they kick this sodium chlorine as well as water out from this microvilli cells inside the gut and they will keep them flowing outside so as a result what we can see we know that there are different kind of transporter present in cell membrane now as a result of this triggering mechanism they keep on uh, releasing water outside in, into the gut so as a result we the gut fluid is become very very watery and obviously they are mixed with stool so now we can look for the watery stool kind of disease and it is eventually turned into diarrhea okay and the cells the microvilli cells are now as a result of lacking of water they are becoming dehydrated so we also talked about the dehydration in this case. So this thing is caused due to the prolonged activation of this signaling pathway via adenylate cyclase after the binding of heat labile toxin to the signal receptor. So this is a kind of technique that are taken by almost most of these E. coli cells. Okay, some of them also having slight variations among all this process, but uh, more or less and more or less they are having a kind of similar things like that okay so that's the pathogenesis and i hope that's helpful thank you